This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and in this video I'm going to discuss uh, some of the strategies which we should employ while dealing with the uh, Morganian cataracts where the nucleus is extremely dense and I'm going to demonstrate horizontal chop technique and uh, another technique which is uh, flip the base and fake it. Uh, let's see how things are done. Now she is an elderly lady who has this hypermature cataract but what lies beneath is a very dense cataract. So the capsule is stained, the incisions are made, dispersive ovid is placed into the eye and the moment I puncture the anticapsule as expected the liquefied cortex just flows out. I put in more ovid to clear the field. This is not an intumescent lens, there is no pressure in the capsule bag. So once the visualization is improved, doing the rexus is going to be easy. I'm going to use a forceps to hold on to the flap and then create a, an appropriately sized, uh, well centered. This would be measuring about 5.5 mm and it should serve me well. The biggest challenge in these eyes is dividing the nucleus. The nucleus is going to be extremely hard and to add on to it, the nucleus is going to be mobile. So our all the maneuvers of FACO are going to be difficult and we need to be as gentle as possible without causing any stress on the bag, zonules or the posterior capsule. In such eyes where the nucleus is hard and mobile, I would prefer to do a horizontal chop technique. And because I want to have a good hold at the core of the nucleus, I create a small trench using continuous torsional energy. And once we have a small pit, the tip of the phaco is buried into the substance of the nucleus so that we are really holding it at the core so that the hold is very firm. A horizontal chopper goes across the equator of the nucleus, hooks it and then is pulled towards the tip. This leads to a crack which is not full thickness. The nucleus is then gently rotated. The tip goes in, uh, buries into the substance of the nucleus. Let me pause the video and just show you that the entire length of the tip up to the sleeve is buried into the substance of the nucleus and then the chopper is placed exactly opposite the position of the tip and then the scoring is done. That is the, the chopper moves towards the tip. This results in a successful chop and the nucleus is divided. The crack is not complete as the, there is still a small attachment near the base. The tip goes in and reholds the nucleus and the lateral separation maneuver now frees up this fragment. Time to perform the next chop. Nucleus is rotated, the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The entire length of the tip is goes in the nucleus. The chopper hooks the equator of the nucleus just in front of the tip. The scoring is done. So there is attachment at the base, so I go in and re-hold the part, pull it up and then with the chopper I go in and hook around the bridge which is having these attachments and then score it. So now this nucleus fragment is free. So patience is a great virtue to have in such eyes. Here is a half thickness screw which I need to break, I am going to hold the nucleus. The grip is not great and as a result the chop was not complete. The second mistake which is happening is my chopper is not long enough so that it can go and reach the most posterior part of the plate. I am unable to reach it and that's the reason why there is a little bit of a struggle to crack this edge. So if you want to divide this fragment to much more smaller fragments, I hold it at another place and then do the chopping. But the same problem continues. The posterior plate is too thick and too tenacious and there's a small bridge which is holding at the base. So I thought I'll deal with this at a later stage. The nucleus is rotated and the fragments which are free are now consumed. The settings are changed to the continuous torsional mode and the fragments are then consumed to the level of the iris. The second fragment is also consumed and now is the time to refill the chamber with OVD. So the situation currently is that we have got a large hemineucleus and the fragments are not free. They are all free from the anterior aspect but the posterior plate is holding. So there is a bridge which is holding all these pieces at the posterior part of the nucleus. And how do we deal with this? This is where I propose to use my technique of flip the base up and then phaco. 
The entry chamber in the capsule bag is filled with OVD. I'm going to use a Sinskyuk to orient the nucleus in the right position. And then the base of the hemineucleus is flipped up. So by doing this, the posterior plate where there's a bridge which is holding all these fragments together is exposed nicely and it's at an anterior plane. So instead of struggling to crack this posterior plate mechanically, I'm going to use the ultrasound energy to just disrupt this bridge which is holding these three fragments together and this is done in the sculpt setting where we have got very low flow rate and vacuum so the nucleus will not budge there it will be stationary and with great ease we can destroy this uh, posterior plate attachments and now all the three fragments are free from each other so we've got three separate fragments two of them are pushed back to the bag and the one which is anterior is then emulsified in a very controlled manner using the quadrant removal mode wherein we're going to use the toshtal energy in a continuous mode using adequate flow rate and vacuum now subsequently the remaining two fragments are then emulsified Finally, the toughest part of the surgery is over. Now is the time to remove the cortex. The poster capsule is flushed with BSS. The bag is filled with OVD and then using by manual INDA, the cortex is stripped off. The bag is filled with OVD and the originally planned multi-piece intraocular lens is placed into the bag. OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. That's it. The case is done. To summarize, a very hard cataract and a mobile nucleus can be challenging. A horizontal chop technique is a great way to deal with uh, this situation. However, it would really help us if we have a slightly longer chopper which would reach the posterior plate with ease would be beneficial. And in the event where the posterior plate is still holding on to these fragments, using the flip the base up technique is a very efficient and safe way to break the posterior plate. So basically, we're just flipping up the base and then using the ultrasound energy to just cut these attachments effortlessly. Hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.